at subtracting with mixed numbers. And the steps we're going to follow are very similar to adding with mixed numbers. So let's start by taking our notes. Step one, we're going to find a common denominator and rename the fractions. So remember we do that by finding the least common multiple of my two denominators. Step two, and this is our new step, we're going to borrow from the whole number and regroup if necessary. And we'll show some examples of when this is necessary and when it's not. Step three, we're going to subtract new fractions and whole numbers. And very important, step four, we're going to make sure your answer is in simplest form. Let's go ahead and look at our first example. In this example, we're going to subtract with mixed numbers, but it is not going to be necessary to borrow and regroup. So let's do the problem 2 and 3 fourths minus 1 and 1 third. So step one, find common denominator and rename your fractions. If I'm thinking about my least common multiple of 4 and 3, it's 12. So how do I get 12? I'm going to multiply 4 by 3. Remember, if I multiply the denominator by 3, I need to multiply the numerator by 3. And I'm going to rename my fraction to be 9 twelfths. Again, my common denominator is a 12. And how am I going to make 3 a 12? I need to multiply by 4. And I need to do the same to the top. So my rename fraction is 4 twelfths. Now, step two is not necessary because I can do nine subtract four. And so I'm going to go ahead and move on to step three, subtract my new fractions and whole number. Nine minus four, remember we only subtract the numerator, so nine minus four is five. My denominator stays a 12. And subtract my whole numbers, two minus one is one. Step four, we need to make sure our answer is in simplest form. And if I look at 5 twelfths, my only common factor is 1. So they have no other common factor, and it's in simplest form. So I'm done. Now let's look at another example, example where I do need to borrow and regroup. So let's do the example 5 minus 3 and 4 eighths. So if I'm looking at this example, one common mistake that some students will do is they think we can just bring down my 4 eighths and do 5 minus 3, which is 2, but that is not correct. I cannot take away 4 eighths from nothing. And so I need to go straight to step 2, and I need to borrow and regroup. It is necessary in this problem. So I need to borrow from my whole, and my five holes is now four holes. Now I took away one hole, and I also need common denominators. So if I want my denominator to be an eight, but it has to be equivalent to one hole, I know eight eighths equals one hole. So that's how we're going to borrow and regroup here. I'm ready for step three, subtract my new fractions. 8 eighths minus 4 eighths, so my numerator 8 minus 4 is 4, and my denominator stays an 8. Subtract my whole numbers, 4 minus 3, make sure that you use the one that you had made when you borrowed, which is 1. Moving to step 4, we have to make sure our answer is in simplest form. If I look at 4 and 8, I know they have a common factor of 4. So I need to divide both the numerator and denominator by 4, and I get 1 half. But I cannot forget to bring my whole number over as well. So my answer is 1 and a half. Let's do one more example where we have to borrow and regroup. So let's look at the problem of 7 and a half minus 3 and 4 fifths. So step one, I need to find my common denominator. If I'm looking at my denominators and I think about my LCM, my LCM is 10. 
So I need to multiply 2 by 5 to equal 10. And if I multiply the denominator by 5, I need to multiply the numerator by 5 as well. So my renamed fraction is 5 tenths. Looking at 4 fifths, again I need my denominator to be a 10. And I'm going to multiply 5 by 2 to equal 10. And I need to make sure I multiply my 4 by the 2 as well. My renamed fraction is 8 tenths. Now if I'm ready to subtract, I can see I cannot do 5 take away 8. So I must borrow from my whole number. If I go to my 7 holes and I take 1 away, it's now 6. I took away 1 whole, so I need to add a whole. And my denominator is a 10. How many tenths equals 1 whole? 10 tenths equals 1 whole. It's very important in this step right here that we make sure that we combine these two values. We cannot forget that I already had 5 tenths and I have added 10 tenths to it, making 15 tenths. My second fraction was still 8 tenths. And now I'm ready to move to step 3, to subtract my new fractions. So 15 minus 8, I get 7. And my denominator is a still a 10. And then I move to my whole number, 6 minus 3 is 3. And step 4, I have to make sure my answer is in simplest form. And 7 and 10, the only common factor is 1, so yes, it is in simplest form. So that is subtracting mixed numbers. Now let's see some examples for you to do on your own. On the left side of your notebook, I want you to try these three problems. Nine and a half minus six and three fourths, six minus two and four fifths, 13 and one fourths minus eight and one twelfths, and very important that you make sure your answer is in simplest form. That's important for all of our answers when we're working with our fractions. Mm -hmm.